Good day, Minecraftians. This is Purple Mentat bringing you episode 6 of my Agrarian Skies Hardcore Quest Let's Play. This game pack by Jaded Cat is available on the Feed the Beast launcher. Let's go over what we did last time. I got started with the Hardcore Quest mod, which I believe I have the book for right here, and completed the first few quests. Between episodes, I completed more of the Learning to Skyblock section, getting through bucket creation, dust creation, ore creation, smeltery, all the way up to pulverizer is the next step. I did not touch the fishing branch because I've not done any fishing on screen yet. And I feel that any quest that I do complete, I should at least show parts of on screen. So here's the rewards that I've gotten so far. Got myself a stone axe with Bane of Arthropods 5. That might be useful later, so I'm going to hang on to it. I got a boat with Feather Falling 5. That will definitely be useful later when I can transfer enchantments. Got some TNT, got some angel blocks, a slimy sapling, which will grow a kind of a tree, except it has slime blocks as the wood. Right there, congealed green slime, which can be used to create four slime balls. I also have a bunch of hearts and a bunch of goodie bags. I also have a bucket of liquid slime. This is the blue um goo that you find on the slime aisles in tinker's construct and it's used to um spawn blue slimes so i'm going to set up a little room to spawn some blue slimes later now i wanted to show on screen what we were going to get out of the reward bags so i'm going to clear off the hot bar and let's start opening them up i got three basic reward bags and one good reward bag so one ooh, enchantment table and 16 magical wood that is a fantastic find so magical wood from extra utilities operates like five bookshelves each and can also be used to create the ender core, the advanced filing cabinet, and the golden bag of holding. Well, the um, reincarnating golden bag of holding, which is less useful here because hopefully we won't die at all. And as you can see, it boosts the max enchantment level of nearby enchantment tables by five levels up to a max of 30 levels. The Ender Core is going to be the most useful out of that. I'm only going to need six of these magical wood for the enchantment table because that'll get me up to 30 levels. So that will leave enough to make two of these Ender Cores, which are used to make, uh, which will be just enough to make one Ender Quarry. So once, oh, that's evil. Okay, so maybe we'll be able to use that in the Nether at some point, but we're going to have to mine some Nether Iridium ore to do it. Thank you, Jaded, for um, just the sheer evilness of your mind tweakers recipes. That's, I don't even know what to say to that. It's cruel and unusual. I'm going to make myself feel better by using a couple of these hearts. Yay, five lives. Hopefully we won't lose any. Okay, basic reward bag number two. Oh, cosmetics. All of the stained glass. We Looks like that's one of every color. That is 16 blocks of each color of stained glass. I'm just going to put those right in the chest right away. Because that is some inventory blocking stuff there. Reward bag number three. 16 arrows. Wah, wah. I guess that's not terrible since that's a... Infinity? What? 16 arrows named infinity. That is weird. I don't think that's anything except they were named Infinity. Because it shows the block ID as number, I mean the item ID is number 262 from default Minecraft. Probably just a bit of a troll. Okay. And the good reward bag. Included one red herring. <laughs> uh, that's probably another troll reward. So the rewards that you actually get out of the bags seem to be com entirely random and most humor value, which I, honestly I approve of. That's fantastic fun. I have another chest around here somewhere. Also between last time and now, I set up a couple of signs on my chests. Not that that's actually helping me any. Oh, here's the other chest that I thought I had somewhere. Uh, grab my axe out of here. This is all the stuff that I'm going to be using this episode. I've got, actually gotten some plans on progressing through the quests. I have enough room for all of the rewards in one place. 
We'll do something with that enchantment table a little bit later on. It would be nice to maybe enchant some armor or something, but I don't want to actually use my experience on a default enchanting table unless I absolutely have to. Also, since last time, I've set up a very basic bit of processing over here, pounded out a whole bunch of gravel and sand and dust, and I've mostly been working through the dust. I'm actually going to grab a stack of that out of there because I'm going to need it in a moment. And I've got myself a fair bit of redstone going on, a whole bunch of metals in here that I need to process when I have a chance. So a total of over a stack of redstone at this point to be able to get moving on various projects. Redstone is very important for all of the machines. To make the dust, I was using an ender generator, which is created with a bunch of ender pearls and eye, some eyes of ender, which are made with ender pearls and blaze powder, a uh, block of iron and a furnace. By the way, what I did just there, if you click on an item in recipe mode, it shows you the recipe. And I can do that even inside of this recipe. And then I can click backspace to get back to whatever I was just looking at. So say I want to know how to make a, a, an Eye of Ender, and I don't want to know how to make Blaze Powder, so I want to know how to make that. Oh, okay. Well, now I can backspace to the Eye of Ender, and I can backspace again to the Ender Generator. And if you backspace again, it takes you back to the inventory you were looking at. The Ender Generator creates power from Ender Pearls, and it produces 2 million RF per Ender Pearl. RF being Redstone Flux, the Thermal Expansion Powder. It creates that power... It's not going to show me without putting a pearl into it. And as you can see, I have a ton of ender pearls at this point, so I don't mind effectively wasting one. It creates that power at 80 redstone flux per tick. There's 20 ticks per second. So it will run for that 20 minutes and 50 seconds, producing 80 redstone flux per tick. And I'm going to, loot, I'm going to be wasting a whole bunch of power right at the moment because it can only store... You can't really see it with any eye enabled. You can hit O to temporarily disable any eye. It can only store 500,000 RF, so it can only store a quarter of what it can produce from one ender pearl. Okay, so first project I want to work on right now is expanding the platform further. And I've run out of the green stained clay and the brown stained clay that I was mining from the whole area. But I kind of like the aesthetic that I've got with the brown underneath the green, so I'm actually going to set up a little bit of a system to farm all of that right now. The brown stand, I won't be able to set up a an actual, like, full system to completely um, automatically harvest cocoa beans at the moment, but I can do that for cactus. There we go. Just going to break down these trees, and then I'll be right back. Alright, got some room cleared out now. I'm going to make a bit of a cocoa bean farm. Now, early on, when I was sifting sand, I got some cocoa beans. And, more importantly, I got some exotic seeds. Exotic seeds, when planted in the world, and we add some bone meal here to speed this process along, become jungle saplings. Which, bone meal those to grow. And then, I forgot my crook. This is a bone crook. I'm not sure if I showed the recipe on this, but it's just a bunch of bones in a line. And it has 406 durability. Still uses two per leaf block instead of the 170 or so that a stick crook does. And because jungle saplings don't drop very frequently, I'm going to make myself another bone crook so that I guarantee I get as many jungle saplings out of this as I can. Also, I'm using a new food source. I ran out of bread and decided that I've got a lot of potatoes here. It's time to use those in a way. These are fries. They're a nourishing light meal. You create them with potato, salt, which you've seen how to make, and bakeware, which is either bricks or glass in a crucible formation. Not crucible. Um, smeltery controller. Chest for those vanilla players out there. All right, a couple of jungle saplings, that's fantastic. If I can get four out of this, then I can start collecting some vines too, which I'm not sure if those will be useful, but I still like them. They're like free ladders if you give them the time to grow. And in a sky block, anything that can grow down for a significant period of time is useful. Okay, I need to be 
taller. I need to not walk off the edge here. Because while that wouldn't be a complete end to the map at the moment, as I have five lives, I believe, it would still be less than great because I've got some useful stuff on hand, like my quest book and my only cocoa beans. Sort of why I want to expand the platform. Less chance of sudden hilarious death syndrome. An affliction known only to those who play Jaded Cats games. Alright, so you can plant cocoa beans on a jungle tree and they will slowly grow. You can make them grow faster by bone mealing them. Once you bone meal them a couple of times, that's 100% grown, that's what it looks like. They break pretty easily with a couple punches and you get much more than you put in. And I'm going to fill up both of these trees with cocoa beans. Now, the reason I want them is so that I can make the brown stained clay. And I believe it only takes one cocoa bean to make 16 brown stained clay. So I've got plenty to make, you know, multiple stacks already. I'll probably just fill up the one tree for the moment. Get these bone milled and harvested. They grow pretty quick on their own because they're not a useful food source without other extras. You can use cocoa beans to make cookies, but you need two wheat to make eight cookies, and they only restore half a heart. And there's that brown stained clay. You use hardened clay and cocoa beans. Um, it can also make brown wool out of eight wool and, more, and cocoa beans. You can use brown stained glass. It's basically a brown dye as its primary usage. Useful in mariculture, it looks like. And to make chocolate frames. I think extra bees. But yeah, for the most part, it's color and nothing more. There we go. I'll keep these on hand and I'll expand that later slowly. So now I need green. And to get green, I need cactuses. Because cactus green is the easiest to get vanilla dye or the easiest to get green dye, which is made by smelting cactuses. To get cactuses, I need the cactus seeds that I got from sifting sand earlier, early on. And I'm going to need to build a bit of a system because the cactuses I can set up to automatically um, grow and collect. And I'll be right back once I have that, uh, the materials to do that. And I'm back. So, automated cactus farm. This is going to be fairly familiar to anyone who knows how cactuses work, so I'll run through it very quickly. These cactus seeds can be planted on the sand. I'm going to set down a barrel right here. I'm going to put a vacuum hopper on top of it. And I want to set that vacuum hopper to output down into the barrel. And I'm going to put a stone brick to that side and to that side. Because the great thing about cactus is they can't have a block right next to them or they break into an item. However, they'll still happily grow in this state. Once that second block of cactus appears, it'll notice I'm next to an item, pop off, get sucked up by the hopper, and dropped into the barrel. Very simple. Now I can collect large amounts of cactus without ever needing to pay any attention to it. That'll get me 64 stacks of the stuff. And then I'll be able to smelt it down in a furnace, probably build a better solution to that, either this episode or next. We'll see how we do on time. To get the sand, I used the pulverizer, because I'm tired of pounding things with a hammer. Now, this pulverizer I made between episodes so that I would be able to create all of the sand and dust and gravel and such that I've been saving to get the metals. We're going to go over the details of how all that works in a moment, but the most important thing to know is that the pulverizer basically replaces the hammer in terms of how it affects cobblestone, gravel, and sand. And it gives you a small bonus. If you use cobblestone in the pulverizer, you get gravel and a 10% chance of sand. If you use gravel in the pulverizer, you get sand and a 10% chance of dust. And if you use sand in the pulverizer, you get dust with a 10% chance of dust. So you get slightly more out of your cobblestone, not that cobblestone's exactly a rare resource. You'll note that we now have the ability to create all of the dyes. And in fact, there's a whole bunch of uh, these cocoa beans growing already. Wow, those go fast. But we don't have any way to create the clay. Well, that's the next step. And I'm sorry to say, but this lamppost is in my way. It's pretty, but I prefer to have the space to work with. I want to create an automated, well, a semi-automated clay creation system. 
I can't really call anything fully automated at the moment. To do that, I'm going to need my bucket. I'm going to need some fluid ducts, an item duct, a barrel, and an aqueous accumulator. Also, a plain old regular vanilla hopper. No need to upgrade that. Hoppers are very useful and frequently um, ignored by the modding community. The reason for that's pretty simple, actually. When they first showed up, hoppers were very much um, lag monsters. But thanks to, I believe it was Professor Mobius's um, Evoc mod, they became um, tick efficient to use. They, they stopped taking up nearly so many CPU cycles. What was happening was they were checking every single tick to see if they could grab an item from up top or put an item down below. And it was just causing a lot of lag. Now, I'm not sure exactly what was done to fix that a bit, but it's definitely a lot kinder on CPUs these days than it used to be. Um, I want to get a block there, but probably too dangerous. Eh, let's see. Do that. I can do something like that. I can put down some green, actually, because I know I have a block underneath. Still not perfect, but we're slowly getting there. And then another water bucket. Okay, so to create clay, I need water and dust in a barrel. I can pipe water into that barrel from an aqueous accumulator. So if I stick that barrel there, you'll see it's already full of water. And I can toss the hopper on top of that, pointing into it with some dust, and I'll put the dust in the barrel. All Already, there's clay. Now I just need to extract it, which I'm going to do with an item duct right there on the bottom. It has to be the bottom. You set that to output. Go and grab the chest that I forgot and to craft and a lever. Apologies for being slightly stuffy today. I think I've got myself a bit of a head cold. I know it's affecting me. I know I'm sniffling a bit. So you turn it on. It pulls out the clay, instantly fills with more water. I've got a couple of stacks of dust prepared that, that were just waiting for me to set the system up on camera. Clay, out, clay, and that's a fairly quick rate of clay production. So I've already got 16 clay. To turn that into hardened clay, I need to cook the clay block in a furnace. And each block of clay turns into one hardened clay. And then if I take that clay, I can combine eight clay with a dye of any color to get eight um, stained clay of that color. All right, so there's our clay and dye production systems. This hasn't grown yet. Cactus is apparently very slow in this world. That will be an issue and slow things down. So I'm going to do a little bit of waiting off camera and see if this cactus actually grows anytime soon. If it doesn't, I might investigate some other form of green dye. Be right back. All right, folks, I did a little bit of testing in a test world on cactuses and used an awful lot of an item that accelerates plant growth ticks. The hunger overhaul cactuses, they grow extremely slow. So I'm not gonna be able to get a significant amount of green dye out of those four this time, but I'll work on slowly expanding that for now. Oops, still in cheat mode after test roll. Sorry about that. So I believe what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the uh, brown for an underneath layer and layer the top of it with cobblestone, of which I have a ton. Later on, I'll be able to replace that cobble with the green stained as the cactus grows. So it's at least a start. It'll take a lot of time to process, and eventually I'll expand that farm out. But I'll do, I'll show it to you but I'm going to do the actual expansion off camera. So for now, I want a better way to cook than using a whole bunch of charcoal because I've got power generation going. So I may as well um, make a furnace that can handle, that can use the power that I'm generating. And there is one just like that. It's called the Redstone Furnace from Thermal Expansion. And it's made with some bricks, a machine frame, a bunch of fairly simple things to get. So I'm going to need a couple of clay, which... I don't have any normal clay on hand. That's entertaining. It's all in here. Or, well, right here. Wow. We're just going to pretend that never happened, okay, folks? 
vacuum hopper is greedy. There we go. That'll be the last thing that I need to cook in that particular area. I'm going to need some copper, some redstone, some gold. I'm going to need two gold, four iron. I think at least four glass. Start making some of the components right now. I need a redstone reception coil, which is made with gold and redstone. One of those. I need a machine frame, gold, iron, and glass. One of those. From that, I just need the copper ingots and the bricks. So, wait for the bricks to be done, and I'll be right back. There we go. Bricks are all cooked up. Couple of bricks. And one redstone furnace. Two copper, one redstone reception coil, one machine frame, two bricks, and a redstone furnace. Gets me a redstone furnace. Or a redstone dust. Alright, so I've got my redstone furnace. I'm going to set it down right next to the generator for now so that it can pull power. Later on, I'll build an actual energy network using conduits and energy cells and all of that nonsense. At the moment, though, it's just not something I am too worried about. I only have the two machines that I'm going to be running for the moment. Probably next episode, I'll focus on how to create a more advanced thermal expansion energy network. To finish off this particular episode, though, I wanted to show you a couple of things that I've been using. One is the dolly from Java, which is made with five iron and a wood. And you can use it to, let's say I'm not happy with where this is. I can pick up that whole chest by right-clicking it, get a couple of slowness debuffs, and move it over a space. Set it back down, everything's all, uh, still there. I can do, I wonder if I can do the same thing with the vacuum hopper. Nope, that one doesn't uh, work quite the same as an inventory. So there you have it, that's the dolly. I've been using it to move around chests and barrels and stuff. For example, the 64 stacks of cobble that are in this barrel, very simple to just move that over there, grab that barrel, plant it down, and now I can create lots and lots more cobblestone. Other than that, I believe we're at a point where I want to progress some of the quests a bit. I'm going to reduce my inventory issue slightly. 8 hardened clay plus 1 cocoa bean equals 8 brown stained clay. Now I have more building materials. The next step on the quests. I'm 45% done with learning to sky block. I need a raw fish. I think I got a raw fish as a reward, actually. That red herring. So. Or maybe that's a cooked fish. I'm about to find out, because this is a manual submit quest, so maybe. Nope. That's a shame. Alright, I'm not going to do any fishing today, because I need to build a new pond for it. And, well, actually I don't, but I'm not going to do any fishing today, because it's boring and dull and slow, and I don't like it. So, to continue on the learning to skyblock, I need to make a pulverizer. I made one before the quest mod was installed, but that doesn't help me at the moment. So, to make a pulverizer, I need another machine frame. I need a piston, which I don't have the... It's always something. Cobblestone. And I made that with an aluminum ingot. I need another redstone re reception coil. And then copper and flint, plus those three uh, building blocks, gets me a pulverizer. Now if I go check my quest blog, I'll see, oh look, I made a, qu I made a pulverizer. And I'm going to pick my reward bag. There's my reward bag. Hmm. I thought it was supposed to give a full heart. Nope. Quarter of a heart. So deposit that quarter of a heart in here. And I got a diamond hammer with fortune three. As I covered in an earlier episode, if you use the um, fortune enchant on a uh, um, block of say the iron gravel you'll get more crushed iron ore out of it than you would otherwise but instead of um using that up right now i'm actually going to save it because the fortune enchant will be more useful for me to remove with the disenchanting mechanics later make it into a book and then i can copy it endlessly and i got a greater reward bag out of that one so I'm actually going to deposit some stuff because this greater reward bag might have a whole bunch of stuff in it. Open that up. I got an angry doll and a creepy doll from X Nihilo. 
I believe that the angry doll lets me spawn a blaze and the creepy doll lets me spawn an enderman. So yeah, we'll toss those in the reward chest and maybe poke them later. At the moment, I don't need blaze powder or enderman pearls. So a bit of a waste of a greater reward bag, but such is life. Next quest along the way. Ooh, is actually the end one, and I have to do fishing before I can do that. So, I'm going to move on to something different. Go with the flow. First quest is fluid storage. I need to create a drum, a portable tank, a tank, and a fluid tank. That's all of the different forms of fluid storage that are available in this mod pack. I'm going to start with the drum. To make the drum, this is an extra utilities fluid storage, and... Oh, it's only showing me you've filled drums. That's okay. Oh, there we go. There's an empty drum. It requires a whole bunch of iron, but it can hold 256 barrels. I mean, 256 buckets of a liquid. Uses a bunch of iron ingots, a couple of weighted pressure plates, and a cauldron. To make the cauldron, put them in that pattern. Uh, seven iron ingots. To make the weighted pressure plates, there are two iron ingots next to each other. So, that's two, four, and seven is eleven. How about... There we go. And six more. 17 iron ingots makes one drop for 256,000 storage units. Now, to make the extra utilities, I mean the open blocks tank, we're going to need some glass panes. They go in a cross pattern with obsidian on the corners. That gets tanks from open blocks. To make the Mary Culture fluid tank, needs copper, planks, and wood. All of which I have on hand. And to make the um, portable tank from thermal expansion, you need one copper in the middle and then four glass around the sides. It's a portable tank. So there we go. All of the different fluid storage options. And that is complete. I get a full heart, a reward bag, and some other random reward bag. Use the full heart immediately, up to six lives now. Got a good bag and a basic bag. Once again, I'll go over here. Empty up inventory. Out of the basic bag, I've acquired a rain muffler. That makes two because I was started with one in this pack for free. Out of the good bag, I got a rain muffler. That makes three. That was not very useful. Rain mufflers can't be used to create anything. They just make rain basically silent in a small area around them, which, bit of a shame. So, I believe that that's all the time that I have today. Ooh, look. I got one cactus. Ow, don't stand on cactuses. They're sharp and spiny. So I got my first cactus. Hooray! I can start making some green stained clay. Actually, no, no I can't. I can start expanding the cactus farm. Alright, as I was saying, I believe that's all the time we have for today. Next time, we'll be looking into... Ooh, fluid management from... No, we won't be looking into that yet. We will be looking into some of the uh, first steps in other quest chains, such as Storage Wars in the For the Hoarding, or the Wizard School in You're a Wizard Steve. We'll also be creating a little pond to go fishing in and start spawning some squids in, and that'll be down near the Monster Tower um, Fall area. Thank you very much for joining me. If you enjoy my series, please like, comment, subscribe. All of that really helps a lot more than you would expect. And... I will see you next time.